Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. All right, so the bye weeks are here, so we only have, I say in quotation marks, only have a 10 game main slate. So we have four weeks of data from the main slate. So I'm going to pull out a few nuggets so I can help you have the best opportunity to win that guap. All right, so let's look at the quarterback. So through the first four weeks, of a main slate DFS, something should obviously jump out at you when looking at the quarterbacks who have been in the winning lineup on the main GPP. And obviously that is, you don't have to break the bank to win that guap on the main slate. And I will actually say that finding that value quarterback can actually give you those extra dollars you need so you can buy that expensive running back and the expensive wide receiver. So we can see in week four, we're going from uh, newest to oldest. We can see in week four, Justin Fields, 5,500 was in the winning lineup. And then you have Sam Darnold, week three for Minnesota, 5,500 quarterback in the mint in the winning GPP lineup. And then it's even crazier. Week two, Daniel Jones, 5,300. I mean, dang, in the winning lineup, somebody started Daniel Jones and is a millionaire now. And then you have Josh Allen. So he was the one time where the most expensive quarterback on the slate was in that winning GPP lineup. Another thing that I'm sure you probably noticed is all of these quarterbacks are some what mobile it is dfs gold to have a quarterback who is a mobile quarterback you know that can actually have a good day where they get some passing touchdowns mixed mixed with some rushing yards and or touchdowns so when you're making when you're looking for your quarterback uh for week five and we'll talk about that i'm going to show you my thought process lineup just know that you don't have to break the bank at the quarterback position and the quarterback doesn't have to be an amazing quarterback in real life all right so let's look at the running backs and um I think one thing we can see is the the highest price running back has never made it into the winning the main slate winning GPP lineup. But you can see that um, as far as running backs, paying up for a running back does have a few more advantages than paying up for a quarterback. And it kind of makes sense. We've kind of seen this in fantasy football, too. We know that 10, 15 years ago, everybody drafted you know, quarterbacks first in fantasy football. And now everybody drafts running backs and, you know, wide receiver, not wide receiver, but mostly running backs and definitely not quarterbacks first. So even in DFS, we're kind of seeing that a little bit in the fact that uh, you have last week, you had Chuba Hubbard, 5,700. And then you had Kyron Williams, 7,100. You had Kamara uh, for New Orleans at 7,000. And we had Joe Mixon at 6,600. So uh, for the running back position, the big thing you're always looking out for is uh the quarterback that running back who's playing that week because the primary running back the first string running back uh was injured so you're always looking for that really at all positions but at the running back position it's a big there's not a big difference um between a lot of times there's not a big difference between the the starting running back and the backup running back on a lot of these teams when it comes to quarterbacks and wide receivers it's a totally different story as we're seeing with the dolphins and uh the struggles that they're going through all right so let's look at the wide receivers and yeah i mean it's crazy so wide receivers you did have week one so week one the most expensive and the best wide receiver did make the winning uh gpp lineup but after that marvin harrison who is a young stud uh, 6,900, but he's not in the 7,000s. Then we had that insane week, Jawan Jennings, uh, who had the career day at 4,100. And then you had Jaden Reed right in the, in the mid range at 6,000. So I think when it comes to uh, the, uh, the, the wide receivers, uh, paying up really high, I mean, you can do it, 
but you're going to have to make some sacrifices in some other areas, where it be the quarterback, running back, or tight end that might weaken your lineup. So I think for the wide receivers, it kind of uh, really helps you if you go look at that and target the mid range as opposed to the value, because I really think the Jennings situation uh, is more of an outlier. All right, let's look at those tight ends. And I think the one thing we've learned from this is you need to target, you know, Saints tight ends. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we can see that when it comes to the tight ends, I think the big takeaway is uh, there have not been any of those second string blocking tight ends that have made, you know, in the main contest, main slate. There have not been, been any of those that have actually made uh, the winning lineup. Uh, but we see Trey McBride was the most expensive tight end week two. But outside of that, we've kind of had mid range in value, but we haven't had those scrub the ground twenty five hundred, you know, twenty seven hundred dollar, you know, tight ends make that winning lineup. All right. So defenses, man, I've been I've been harping on this Def with defense. There's a lot of luck. I mean, don't get me wrong. In real life, on the football field, there is a big difference between the good defenses and the terrible defenses. However, because DFS, we care more. We don't care as much about trying to limit you know, the opponent's points. I mean, that is part that is part of the formula when you're getting your defensive points. But a big part of it is interceptions and sack fumbles and scooping scores. And that can happen even with bad teams. I mean, look at the last two weeks. We just watched on Thursday Night Football, the Buccaneers give up 36 points. And we saw watched the Falcons give up 30 points. So I don't think anybody would say that the Falcons or Buccaneers are a good defense. Yet on the main slate, in the main lineup, the last two weeks, the Falcons, who uh, the Saints muffed a punt, and that from there that separated them from everyone else. And then you had you had the Bucks, who didn't have a good day. But when it comes to your defense, a lot of times you don't need them to have an amazing day if you handle your business, other parts of the lineup. And then week two, you had from a defense perspective, you had the Stone Cold minimum at twenty three hundred. The Cardinals, the Cardinals were in the winning lineup. And then week one, uh, the best one of the best defenses did you know, make that uh, winning lineup. So I think for defenses, don't overthink this. I mean, there are too many balls that are tipped, you know, at the line of scrimmage and end up going into the defensive player's hand for a pick six. There are a lot of sack fumbles there. There are a lot of screen passes that just go wrong. So uh, don't overthink the defense because as we can see here, it has not correlated. We don't see the 49ers, you know, and we know in real life are a really good defense. We don't see the 49ers or the Jets on this list. All right, so let's go over to DraftKings and let's look at my lineup. You can see I've been looking at baseball too. It's the playoffs. We can close my baseball lineup. <laughs> let's look at my football lineup and we're going to start this thing didn't low. See, they're going to make me use my memory. All right, so let's talk about the quarterbacks and we'll go to the quarterback that I want. So uh, Allen, we know he we know he's amazing. We know he's going to be in a, uh, a good contest because what we're looking for when it comes to a DFS perspective, we know Vegas isn't always right. But one thing I like to look at are the over under what it what is what's the total you know for the game what's the spread for the game because the total matters i mean if you're 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 going against the grain if the total for the game is like 35 and a half i'm trying to look over here at my second screen i forgot which game has a total of uh 35 yeah <laughs> dolphins patriots the over under is a 30 is 35.5 you can play you can play players from Dolphins and Patriots. You can do it. But just know, you know, offensive players, defensive players in that, that game are great. You can play players, but just know you gotta ask yourself, what am I doing? As opposed to some of the higher score games on my other screen, we have we have uh, the Ravens and Bang and Bengals. Their over under is 48 and a half. You have uh, Bills versus Texans, over under is 47 and a half. You have Cardinals uh, 49ers, over under is 48 
and a half. Packers, Ram, 48 and a half. So those are the kind of games that you're going to want to target with those high over under. So I like Allen, but we just talked about how you can save some guap at quarterback. So from a value perspective, if the trend continues, my favorite sub 6,000 quarterback is Geno Smith. He's at 5,900. We can see that he's He's at home, so uh, the, uh, the Seahawks are at home and they're seven point favorites. And But if we're not gonna go for the value quarterback, my favorite quarterback this week is actually um, Jordan Love. You know, he's coming back from injury, his first game back from a DFS perspective. Uh, he did really well, 34.16 uh, point, points. Uh, the over under is 48 and a half and Green Bay, they are three point favorites uh, or other quarterbacks that I like. I'm going to put him in because that's who I want to start. Other quarterbacks that I like, um, Jaden Daniels. I mean, I know he has a tough matchup, but I, we're going to we're going to find out, you know, this week and he's going to be at home. We're going to find out this week whether he's matchup proof. Um, Lamar Jackson, even though he's on the road, it's a good matchup for him. I think Burrow's a little bit sneaky, especially if you're going to start, you know, Jamar Chase. Uh, Purdy is a really sneaky pick. Um, really has a really good matchup at home. Who else do I like? Those are the ones that really stand out. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Love. All right. So at the running back position, I am going to go with Trey Sermon. Uh, we can see that uh, Jonathan Taylor is out. Uh, so we're going to go with uh, Trey Sermon and save some guap. We talked about it when it comes to the running back position. We want to take advantage of those injuries. We saw how Jordan Mason uh, ended up in the optimal lineup when uh, McCaffrey went out. Uh, so who else is here? Obviously, I had to eat a lot of crow, you know, when it comes to uh, to Derek uh, Henry. I like Derek Henry. Um, I like Mason. He has a good he has a good matchup at home. I mean. <sighs> <laughs> the Dolphins offense is broken. This is sad. I mean, this is not a chance fault, but I mean, everybody's targeting him. I mean, and you know, you can't blame them. Um, you know, Walker looked really good coming back from injury last week, 33.6 uh, fantasy points. Keep an eye on Robinson. If Robinson is out, then Austin Eckler is obviously going to be a, uh, a good choice. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, I mean, 6100 he is since uh since uh andy dalton has taken over i mean just been a stark difference 30.9 and 20 uh, 25.1 fantasy points who else do i talked about eckler um but yeah at the end of the day uh, i'm actually going to go with derrick henry i had to eat a lot of crow in the preseason early on i um I said some bad things about him, but look at this, 10.6, 16.6, 33.4, 38.9. Uh, there's a good, you know, good game script. You know, you have positive and negative game script. Obviously, the positive game script is when your team is ahead. And when your team is ahead, there's a really good chance they're going to run the ball and the Ravens are are favored. Then you have a negative game script and that is when your team is behind. And when you have a negative game script, that's when you want to have those right, right receivers in because the quarterback needs to make up points. And you do that through the air because we know that when you run the ball, the clock does not stop and that shortens the game and you do not want to shorten the game when you're behind. So I like Derrick Henry. All right. So let's go with the wide receiver. So uh, I'm obviously going to have a little skinny stack when it comes to Jordan Love. So the question is, who am I going to pick? Well, injuries have made it a little bit easier for me. Dobbs is out and Watson is doubtful, probably going to be out. So it's really, am I going to do Reed and Wicks or am I going to do Reed Wicks um, kind of situation? So uh, once again, the over-under is pretty high for this game, so I wouldn't blame anybody if they did a Reed Wicks stack uh, with Jordan Love, but I'm going to save some salary, and I'm going to go with Wicks uh, in this situation. We can get back here, and then I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison. I mean, he's just been amazing so far this year. Um, we can look at his uh, salary, 7,500. We can see that he he's had a bad game. He started the year off, you know, not so well with the chemistry, but a lot of quarterbacks were not uh, in sync with their wide receivers. But since that first game, he's had 32, 17, and 15 fantasy points. And then we're going to go with, I'm not going to go with Metcalf. I'm actually going to go with um, his backup 
Smith and Jigba, we can look and see that he's 5,800, and we can see that he's had he had a 13.1 fantasy point uh, last game in that 26.9 fantasy point game. So definitely, I told you I like Geno Smith. So if you're starting Geno Smith, I can really understand why you go with Njigba. All right, so let's look at the let's look at the tight ends, and I'm actually going to go with the safety blanket uh, pick. And we know what I'm talking about there. We know when you have young quarterbacks, a lot of times they like to dump the ball off to their big target, and that being their tight end. So I'm going to go with Cole Komet, 4300. We can look and see he had the big game against uh, Indianapolis with 11 targets, but the other games five, three, and one. So definitely going to go with Komet today. And then we're going to skip the flex. We're going to go to the defense. And we talked about that over under. I'm looking at my second screen again. We talked about uh, the over under for the uh, the Dolphins and the Patriots of 35 and a half. So definitely. And we saw how pitiful the Dolphins um, offense is right now. So definitely like the Patriots. Now, another game that has a terrible over under the Raiders and the Broncos. So definitely. Um, the Raiders, 3,200. Broncos, 2,900. So I like those defenses. Uh, but I'm just going to go with the Patriots also at 2,900. So that leaves me with 4,500 in the flex. So I can scroll down here to the flex. And, excuse me, uh, what who do I want here? So, I mean, I want to say likely the situation... The situation in Baltimore has just been maddening from a, uh, a tight end perspective. Uh, we know that likely looked amazing on national TV week one, and we know um, Adam, not uh, Mark Andrews, uh, did not. So, I, who else do I like in this in this price range? You have Gabe Davis. You have Gabe Davis, but I mean Jacksonville has not looked in, looked very uh, impressive. Um, you Douglas, we just we just talked about we talked about the, the Patriots uh, situation. So I would definitely say here I would leave 100 on the table and I would go with Isaiah likely. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.